Hey guys, and welcome back to the BFC. Yeah, good morning to you. I'm just waking up here, and uh, good morning to you. And I hope you uh, you guys all had an awesome 2023, you know, and I hope you have an even more successful, more prosperous 2024. Hey, listen, I know 2023 was rough for some people, but uh, hey, you just got to keep on keeping on and keep doing what you're doing, keep doing due diligence, and keep reading, keep submerging yourself in information. So... What a way to end the year, talking a little bit about my favorite uh, long-term hold, uh, Eyeless International. And listen, this did not become a long-term hold because the share price went down. When I first started uh, talking about this stock a year and a half ago, almost two years ago probably, yeah, two years ago in March, uh, I said it's at least a three- to five-year hold for me. And those are my exact words because the market goes up and down. That's just the truth. And do I think it was an anomaly for it to go to 50 cents? Yes, it was, especially of all those other stocks that were doing the same thing and, and going haywire. And if if experience, if you're an experienced trader, you made a lot of money during that time. If you were a newbie like I was, then yeah, you, 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 you rode that sucker all the way to the bottom. But that's not to say I would have sold on my list. I actually liked the company. I'm still in contact with Nick Link and JP. Nothing insider, just a, hey, how you doing? And listen, that, that management team is very um, transparent. And it, and one thing I realized is this, and this is this is where it goes in the industry, uh, in, in, biz, in the business world. If you're going to trash talk on social media accounts and just be a constant troll, they, they have no obligation to you whatsoever to respond to you. That's, you know, so like, they don't respond to my uh, tweet. Well, I wonder why, because look at your 20 previous tweets. Maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. <laughs> it's about respect, guys. And that's one thing that I've always tried to, <clears throat> listen, maintain. And trust me, I've bit my tongue a lot, especially on the Twitter of stocks, the stock twits. Uh, <laughs> listen, I'm not on there anymore. I'm on there, but I'm not on there. I'm not posting on there anymore. Listen, I already got my stock twits diploma. Um, <laughs> but let's get into this. I know I'm rambling a little bit, but that's that, that's how I feel. So <clears throat> whatever. Um, but this is a great update. And I could see it for what it's worth. Uh, the company has signed contracts to acquire the controlling interest of an OTC-listed SEC reporting company. An update is provided on several matters of importance for shareholders, including the acquisition and associated dividend for Isla shareholders, merger agreement negotiations. Ah, I said that like a Brit. Negotiations. Negotiations. I'm going to keep it American here. Subsidiaries and financing. All right. The acquired OTC company will be majority owned and controlled by Isla's. Details of the acquisition will be announced at the start of the new year as transfer agent procedures and new management appointments are currently being completed. Yes, a certain thing needs to happen for other things need to, needing to happen. Man, I'm still half asleep. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, that, that, that's what, you know, it's, it's called the order of operations, right? The acquired entity hereafter, referred to as emergency response technologies, will be developed as a special purpose vehicle for the finance and accelerated growth of the emergency bro uh, emergency broadcast system. Oh, my God. See, I have not had coffee today. I have my water. <laughs> if there is an emergency broadcast, I better wake my ass up. Um, growth of the emergency response assets, which are currently owned by ILIS. These assets will be merged into ERT for a stock consideration, with ILIS retaining control of ERT and reaping the potential benefits of its accelerated expansion. Now, it, this might sound familiar to you. This is what they did with WSFT a couple years back. And it just goes to show you how long the process takes. And when I talked about four legs of the spider, I'm going to get into that in a second. But let's keep going here. Following ERT's acquisition of emergency response assets from ILIS, it intends to pay a special equity dividend to ILA shareholders, and ERT has appointed its own legal counsel with whom it is finalizing the matter. ERT plans to follow the required corporate action process in order to dividend out a substantial amount of ERT shares to either shareholders, substantial amount. So I'm assuming that maybe it has a bigger share structure than ILIS itself. I know when I see substantial amount, I know what you guys are saying. You know, they may just be like talking it up, but no, I, I'm excited to get ERT shares and I am so close to doubling my ILIS position soon. I'm, I'm just waiting to strike. Waiting to strike. It's going to be soon. I don't think I'm going to be able to control myself. I'm not even looking at the markets right now. It's, it's during opening bell, and I'm here covering Eyeless, which, hey, this is what I like to do. 
Following in the footsteps of Eilis Subsidiary, I just talked about this QID, blah, blah, blah. Eilis believes that the acquisition will add significant value to its structure and operations as the acquired entity has its own funding line in place for purpose, uh, purposes of expansion and to such access to capital will be non-dilutive to Eilis shareholders. I repeat, it'll be non-dilutive to Eilis shareholders. <clears throat> so I think this is a good, if, 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 if this company that they're rolling in if this acquisition that they're rolling in has a substantial uh, connection to funding, then, and if that's what they use is solely the ERT spinoff, I guess we could call it, then this is very good for Eilish shareholders. As a matter of fact, I will say this, and yeah, I, I, I'm going off no notes today, by the way, which I usually do, but, um, you know, look at QIND, <clears throat> look at what they've done in, in regards to like, just, just look at the revenue, all right? Look at the Eilish share structure. I want to you guys to really like look at the structure. I'm not going to pull it up. Just go on OTC markets and do some due diligence. Look at the security details. It has moved minimally since they have taken over. They've added shares when they've absolutely had it too. I know some of you are going to say, well, Brett Rosen knows some. Yeah, yes. Yes, they have to fundraise. And does he get some more favorable deals because, you know, he freaking gave him millions and millions of dollars? Yeah. Have we learned to invest privately? If you have the money and capital to invest $50,000 and $60,000, which most of, most of us don't, all right? Most of us don't, all right? They would be willing to give you shares. It's called fundraising. That's how it works, you know? And yes, I know some people were like, well, yeah, well, it's because, you know, he did $80,000 and he got all the millions. You got to understand the context. The context is he's given millions, Brett Rosen. So, yeah, do we want to see less of that going forward? Yeah, I think this is an indication that they don't want to bloat the eyeless share structure. If they wanted to rug pulse, they would have. If they wanted to bloat it, they would have. If they wanted to reverse split us into oblivion, they would have. They're not doing three reverse splits a year. They haven't done one. I mean, the, the facts sort of matter and the context matters. So while we're bitching about all these things on the stock twits, you know, it, it, you got to keep it relevant to the context and the substance and the numbers and, and the balance sheet. Are, are we in the positive? Yes. Yeah, we are. And the fact that they were able to do what they did with QIND without bloating Eyeless to high hell says a lot. And we're going to be getting QIND shares. We're going to be getting ERT shares. We're going to have a hand in all this. You guys, you got to understand that. Um, yeah, so am I firing off a little bit? I'm excited about this PR. Anybody that, if you're if you're a long Eyeless shareholder and you want to talk negatively about this PR, then you just are negative. You're a pessimist. And I know what some people are thinking. Well, it's not because we've been burned. Blah, 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 blah. No, I think they definitely are taking into consideration macroeconomic conditions because it matters. It matters. And if you know, all right, I'm, I'm just going to keep it going here, but I'm not apologizing. I will not apologize. So if you want to cry about it, go to the uh, the old uh, educational institution of stock twits and bitch about it. <clears throat> that's yeah, that, that's how I feel. Um, having approached, having been approached, the Eyeless management team. Now, this is big. All right is currently in discussions regarding a merger with a NASDAQ-listed company. Did you hear that? This is official news. Therefore, a non-binding term sheet has been signed with the NASDAQ company for purposes of further exploring the merger opportunity for ILIS or its subsidiaries. Following initial meetings, both parties are currently conducting their due diligence. And should negotiations develop to the point that a deal is deemed probable, announcements will be made accordingly. Accordingly, Do not expect it tomorrow. Do not expect it next week. Hell, don't expect it for the next two months. The due diligence process takes time. And the longer the due diligence process takes, that means the more efficient work they're doing. And I prefer that. Patience wins. All right? Good things take time. Great things seem to take for freaking ever, but that's life. Patience wins. On December 7th, 2023, Eilis, Indu uh, Eilis Industrial Subsidiary Quality International filed its amended S1 registration statement for the sale of its common stock in a firm commitment public offering and concurrent NYC American listing. We all know about that. I've covered it before, and they're working towards their S1 effectiveness and aims to uplist in, in early in the new year. As of the state, QND has not heard back from the Securities Exchange SEC. All right, regarding its First Amendment 
of the S1. Meanwhile, QIND confirms that its operating company, this is the news here, has received a purchase order of 73 million from a U.S. headquartered NASDAQ listed global company. Hmm, that's great news. <laughs> Our ILA subsidiary has achieved a $73 million purchase order. Guys, you got to understand that. I, 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 maybe I'm missing something. You can leave it. If you want to rip me to shreds in the comments section, maybe I'm delusional. All right. But there's other companies like 73 million would be the lifespan of an, o, an OTC company, which usually never happens. They can't even break 5 million, half of these, most of these companies. And we're talking about our subsidiaries getting these 20 million, 73 million, like all these contracts. So look, look at the QIND sheet. Just look at it. Go look, go look at, go, go to Sam Aker. Go to his channel and look at a filing breakdown. All right. Yeah. You got to work on profit margins. That's always a thing. You know what I mean? Has been a thing, but like the revenue is there and they're in the positive. They're not operating on a negative. They're not in the red, you know? So, you know, yeah. I mean, guys, I like, I, I'm just, I just, you got to put things in perspective and context because it matters. Context matters. All right. So when one of our subs has <laughs> just got another order for, and, and this isn't just 73 mil, like I just said, they have other orders, you know, that are coming. So the order will be delivered through the course of 2024 and 25 and invoice according to the achievement of delivery milestones. QIND is currently working with its investment bank to raise interim bridge financing for the company, which will carry itself through to its intended uplist. And so that's what they're doing. Yes, I know we're going to talk about, you know, the tranches. Are they going to pay? Have they paid anything? Have they paid anything for Quality International? That's not true. They have made payments toward Quality International. They have renegotiated those, those payments. And listen, sometimes you have to do that in business. That's just, that's the truth. All right. And so ca capital matters. And sometimes when there is not a lot of capital sources, you know, you, you got to make do with what you got. You got to renegotiate. And I'm glad they they were able to reach renegotiation terms. That means they're doing something right. All right. So let's, let's look at this. Uh, all right. This is going basically about that. <laughs> this creates the opportunity for Eyeless to start paying down its debt. And in this regard, the company hopes to reach suitable agreements with its lenders. All right. I, I think that, listen, if they, like I said, if they wanted to rug pulls, reverse split us in oblivion, do three reverse stock splits a year, they could have done that. You know, they have been really uh, consistent in regards to um, their approach. And like I said, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to going to go any further. I, I'm fired up today. And I haven't even had my job. I haven't had the coffee. Eyeless is therefore in discussions to sell. And this is where we're going to, this is the, the, the sort of ticket for me because I'm a CGRA holder. All right. The urban mining business replay solutions to see growth capital. All right. This is pretty cool. Eyeless therefore plans. And, and remember, CGRA, who's the chairman? Nick Link. All right. Mitchell Smith is a CEO and there's a, another board member, a Louis Bennett. And so Eyeless therefore plans to sell. Replay solutions to CGR8 for stock, which although it will have very little impact in terms of cash on the ILIS ba balance sheet. All right. So when the, the filing comes out, like, oh, it was nothing. Well, they're acknowledging that now. So don't be shocked. It will eliminate the requirement for ILIS to raise capital for replay solutions, which the urban mining company will require for its expansion in 2024. All right. However, the stock obtained for the, the sale of replay solutions will have a tangible value to ILIS going forward. As part of, a, of the deal, which is in its closing stages. Eyeless will retain its rights to replay solutions for the U.S. market. All right, I just want to reiterate this one. As part of the deal, which is in its closing stages, Eyeless will retain its rights to replay solutions for the U.S. market. Okay. I think that CGRA is now the, and I, I really did, I didn't want to see them expand on, on Savage Barbell. Maybe, I know they still are. They still have the company. But this is the one of the legs of the spider now. I think CGRA is going to be the subsidiary or the spinoff for its replay solutions. And that's why it's said earlier, we're going to talk about the legs of the spider. All right. We have the renewables, replay solutions. I think that's straight up CGRA. And when they're talking about how it's going to retain its rights to replay solutions for the U.S. market, maybe that is part of the deal that they're negotiating with. Um, this NASDAQ company, perhaps, to take all these, these spinoffs. So we have ERT, their emergency response. 
We have quality industrial, QIND, you know. And then let's not forget we have Serbia in the mix too, all right, <laughs> which you know, there's so many things you forget about with ILAS, you know, because they are involved in a lot. And now you have CGRA, which could potentially be the replay solutions. And what's the one I'm missing? The fourth leg is the defense uh, subsidiary or subsidiary, as they say it in England. Um, no, but seriously, uh, you know, I think when you talk about those four, and I want to hear more about um, uh, the defense sector, Hyperion. I want to hear more about that. But, you know, you know, I'm happy with this PR. That's the only one that they didn't mention. Does, does that mean it doesn't exist anymore? Knock on wood. I think that that's still a thing. And things are progressing as they will. I don't know. So if, if you can't see what's happening here, this is everything that they said they're going to do. Have they had to modify and adapt along the way? Yes. You need to be versatile if you are going to be in the business world. It doesn't happen. You know? You don't go A through Z. Sometimes you got to reverse the C and the B, and it doesn't make sense. But it makes sense on the sheet. It makes sense with the plan. You've got to adapt. All right? It's just a fact. So if people want to whine, they go whine. Let's look and finish with the Nick Link quote. Despite 2023 being a very challenging year for us, we have continued our growth and are implementing a very structured operational plan for our subsidiaries in 2024 and beyond. We believe that this more streamlined plan will add significant asset value, and we will present specifics of our plan at our next shareholders meeting. While our share price has been under significant downward pressure, and while enduring very challenging market conditions, we have crippled so many companies, which have crippled so many companies, they haven't crippled anybody. Nick Link isn't walking around with a baseball bat. <laughs> We have continued to sustain and build valuable assets. We believe this is not yet reflected in our market cap, especially when one considers that one of our subsidiaries has a higher market cap than ILIS itself. It's mind-boggling and it's laughable. Um, no, that's not in the quote. That's me saying that. Um, we continue to work our to our utmost to ensure <laughs> that the true value of our assets will be reflected. And that this value will bring, uh, will begin maturing. <laughs> I'm just laughing. And I'm sorry. Um, that this value will begin maturing for our shareholders during 2024. We especially thank our long term shareholders for your continued support and wish you a happy, healthy, and prosperous new year. I, I'll tell you what I'm laughing about right now because it's like the, 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 the PlayStation 5 entered the house. Yes, it did. And uh, sure enough, I, all I hear is like screaming and s crying and laughing. And it's like, it's like, it's like a, it's, it's crazy. Out. It's like, it's like a, it's like a nut house in the living room over the last two days. Yeah. That thing might disappear. I'm just, <laughs> oh my gosh. So that's all I got. Yep. Look at the cast behind me. It's like, it's like the holidays you get inundated with like just stuff, stuff. It's my office. Look at it. It's like being like. Overran, overran here. Listen, this is all I got. And you know what? We have uh, many opportunities coming our way in the uh, BFC Discord. I'm looking for a great forward to a great partnership with Emerging Growth Conference. So that's news for you guys. I posted that in the Discord a while ago. Um, so expect to see more BFC interviews. I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing. I, I really thoroughly enjoy sitting down with people in the trenches of the trading world. And, and, and I, I love learning about trading and investing. And I think we're getting better at it. You know, all jokes aside, I, I, know, I know I like crack some jokes. And I think you guys are starting to understand my sarcasm. You know, we've only been at this game about a year. But, you know, it's all about getting better. So <clears throat> I just have to have some fun. And I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you had a great 2023. Have an awesome 2024. And remember, there is more that binds us than breaks us. You guys have an excellent morning and a great 2024. Peace out.